Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to show you how to create this energy effect. Now, if you've ever worked with After Effects, there's a good chance you'll be very familiar with Andrew Kramer's legendary Sabre plugin. And I wanted to take a look at how one might go about creating that same sort of look in motion. So let's get going. Okay, for this project, I'm going with 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second, duration of four seconds. And the first thing I'm going to do is come down and select the circle tool, hold down the shift and option key, draw it a nice circle like that, reset its position, come over to the geometry and set the radius to 360. So we've got no fill and we've got an outline that's white and has a width of 10. So I'm just going to rename this group as base and then I'm going to make a new group to drop it into. And I'm going to rename this top group master. So the first thing I want to look at is creating some energetic displacement of this circle. And I'm going to do that using a clone. So I'm going to clone my base group, right click, make clone layer. And I want to drop this clone into a group of its own. So object new group, drop that clone into the group. Let's call this energy. Okay, so I'm going to use a bump map to displace this new circle. And while we're at it, let's just make sure to set this energy group to fixed resolution. So we need to create a displace map. So I'm going to come over to generators. I'm going to grab clouds and I'm going to drop it in behind everything here. I'm also going to grab the color solid. I'm going to make it black. I'm going to set its width to 960 and I'm going to come over and set its X position to 480. I'm going to come into the clouds generator and let's just set the speed all the way up to two. And while we're at it, let's just add in another clouds. So library clouds, drop that in there behind that color solid. Let's set the blend mode of this to add and let's come over and just change up the scale. Let's go for, I think, maybe eight for this. We can adjust this later on if we want to. And let's set the speed to two as well. And this is going to give us a lot more detail, as you can see. So let's take this group that we've made and let's call it left. And let's right click to make a clone layer. And let's call this resulting group right. And let's come to the clone. Let's open up the scale. Let's set the X scale to negative 100 and the Y scale to positive 100. And I'm just going to set the blend mode of this to add just so you can see what's going on. It's not a necessary step, but there you go. So we've got two halves and that they have a different content. But what I also want to do is to make sure that we don't get this angled mirroring is to select the clone and come to behaviors and retiming. And I'll select reverse. And what that will do is run the clip backwards so we don't get any obvious mirroring. So there we go. We've set up our basic displacement. Let's drop that into a new group. Let's grab both of those, drop that into this group. Let's call this group Displace. And actually, let's send it to the back. And we can turn off that group. So let's come back to our energy group here. And let's come to Filters and Distortion and Bump Map. And let's grab the left hand displace map, drag it in there, and let's set the direction to 90. So let's also duplicate this bump map, right click, duplicate, and let's grab the right hand displace map, drop it in there, and set the direction to negative 90. And now we've got the displace happening in both directions like that. And that's why we had to set up this elaborate displace group here. Let's just now keyframe this. Let's come to around 16 frames, I think. Let's keyframe the amount for both of these. And I'm going to set that amount up to about 0.17. Both of those 0.17. Let's come to the beginning and let's maybe just set that back down to, I don't know, 0.1 and 0.1. And let's come forward to three seconds and set both of those down to zero. Now we're going to get this sort of burst of energy like that. Actually, maybe I was wrong. Maybe we wanted zero for the beginning as well, like that. Let's go with that zero and zero. And then it's going to burst out like that. I think that's going to be good. Well, we're at it. Let's just add a right on behavior to our circle. So behaviors, shape, right on. Let's come to around a second and a half. With the right on selected, let's select mark and mark out. 
and then that's going to give us this right on effect like that. So then I want to add some plasma as I'm going to call it. So I'm going to make a new group above the energy group, new group here. Let's call this plasma. And into that group, I'm going to drop from the library a new clouds, bring that in. So this clouds, we want the scale to be eight for both horizontal and vertical. Let's also set the speed up to two for that. So then I'm going to take this group and I'm going to add an image mask to it. So right click, add image mask. And the source for the image mask is going to be my base group. Drag that in there and remember to turn the base group back on again. So then I'm going to take this image mask and add a blur, Gaussian blur. Let's come to around, I don't know, I think a second in and keyframe that amount. And let's have 200 for the amount. And let's come to the beginning, set that amount to 32, come to the end, set it to 32 as well. So it's going to burst on again and then just fade down a little bit like that. What I also want to do is I want to break it up a little bit so it's not quite so uniform. So I'm going to come over to the library and I'm going to drag in yet one more clouds. We're going to turn it off because we don't actually want to see it. And we're going to add another image mask to our plasma group. So add image mask. And let's use this new clouds as the source and switch to luminance and set the blend mode to subtract. And if I toggle that on and off, you can see that I'm eating away into that plasma. So I can also come back into this clouds and open up the gradient and I can adjust these controls here just to get even more breakup of that. And what I might even do is come to the offset Y, add parameter behavior, ramp, and set that end value to one. And what that'll do is make those rise up just a little bit. So it looks a little bit more fiery. And what I can also do is come to the first image mask and I can adjust its Y offset. And if I go for something like 16, you can see that's arising from the top edges a little bit more. And I think that's kind of interesting because it looks more like sort of fire or something. So now we can take our master group and we can add some color to it. So color and colorize. Let's stick with that default. Or actually maybe just give it a little bit more intensity. Let's go with that or something, I think. And then let's come to filters and glow and neon. And let's maybe set that mix amount down to around 60, the outer glow up to 70. And I think what I want to do with my plasma group, I want to come to filters and sharpen and unsharp mask. And maybe just play with that amount a little bit. It's quite subtle. You probably might not be able to see, but it's giving a little bit more definition to, to this plasma effect. So now we're getting this. So what I might do is I might take my energy group, right click and make a clone of it and just rotate that around a little bit like this. Not too much, maybe 30 like that. And I might come into my energy group and above that bump map there, I might just add a masks and keying matte magic and just increase that shrink value. Not very much, just a little bit. And you can see it's it's breaking that up a little bit more like that. It's entirely up to you whether you want to do that or not, whether in, in fact you like this extra clone. I'm not sure that I do. Actually, I'm going to turn that off, leave that off. And I think the final thing I'm going to do is come into my circle and my right on. And I'm just going to have half a circle here. So I'm going to set my stroke length to 50. And I think I might set the stroke offset to 15 just to rotate it around a bit like that. And then I can take my master group and right click and make clone layer. And I can come to color and colorize for that. And first of all, actually, I need to just rotate it around through 180 like so. And let's just adjust that colorize till we've got a sort of complementary color like this. And now we're getting that effect, which is quite fun. And I actually might just come right back down into my base layer, base group, add a blur and Gaussian blur to that. And let's just increase that just, just to soften everything off a little bit. And it might be a good idea to come back down into this left displace group and this secondary clouds here and just adjust that opacity value a little bit. I think probably down to sort of around 40, 50 percent gives us that interesting detail, but without distorting it too much. So then we've got this. So there you go, that's the effect. Obviously we've used a circle here, but you can use pretty much any shape as your base. And that's why we've created that base group there. So anything you drop into that base will take on the whole effect. 
So if instead of that circle, I add a line, draw a diagonal line like that, it's looking a little bit confusing because we've got that uh, duplicate group at the top there, which I just need to turn off. So we've got this sort of lightning strike look and we could take the right on behavior from the circle, copy that onto there and we get this. In this case, you might want to do a draw and arrays. We want the full stroke length. And what have we got? We've got this. And obviously you could use this with text or with a logo or whatever you want to do. So I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again soon.